Scream 6 is out, so I'm gonna be talking about what... I don't even know whose phone this is, that's odd. Hello? Hello, at dumb. Wow, that's original, I haven't heard that before. Yeah, it sounded better in my head. What's your favorite scary movie? Baby's Day Out, your impression of Ghostface is terrible. What do you want? I just wanted to call and inform you that if you give Scream 6 a bad review, you're dead. Ah, okay. Well, I got news for you, muchacho. I'm a 40-year-old movie critic on YouTube. I've been dead for quite some time. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, how are the kids? Anyway, as I was saying, I'm going to be talking about Scream 6, spoiler-free. Let's get started. Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega are back as Sam and Tara, the sisters that got away last time, but will they survive again? They and their two besties from the first film are referred to lovingly as the Core Four, and they will be the only ones they can trust. So what's Scream 6 all about, and what separates it from the other films? Well, for starters, it takes place in New York City. So you have a more exciting, bustling environment for Ghostface to pop out of the shadows, take a stab, and sneak away undetected because there's people everywhere do they take advantage of the setting mm, a little bit a little bit there's that subway scene you've seen in the trailers that's pretty cool there are some great set pieces in this i wouldn't say a lot of them revolve around new york city though we have a gas station we have an apartment complex like it, it's things you could shoot anywhere this could be in iowa outside of the fresher faced cast from scream 5 we also have those old reliables, the old dogs coming back for one more ride or 17 more rides, depending on how many Scream movies they make and who survives at the end of this film. Courtney Cox is one of them. Gail, the reporter that could. She's back for the sixth time. And man, does she look like shit. I'm sorry. There is no way around it. Courtney Cox, beautiful actress. My wife's rewatching Friends, so I'm, I'm peeking in once in a while. Fun show. I'm, I'm a simple man. I like simple things. It's a fun show. Those women are all breathtaking. Courtney Cox got a lot of work done. Every kind of work done imaginable. And now she has a ghost face shape. You could paint her face white and you're good. You're done. No sculpting is needed. It's really long. It's really bony. It's scary. Now, before I get yelled at for body shaming or age shaming, or whatever we, we do nowadays. I also have to go in on Hayden Penetere too. Now listen, I know I'm no spring chicken. I'm 40 years old. I, I, I'm not aging beautifully by any means. But I think if you're a celebrity in Hollywood and you're putting yourself on the big screen, you can be critiqued. You can be criticized. You can criticize me. You can say I'm ugly in the comments. I'll, I'll be okay. I'll live. And so will these people that are paid far better than I am. Hayden Penetere looks like she's 60. She's playing a 30-year-old in the movie. Had she said she was playing a 55-year-old, I would have said, yeah, that makes sense. That adds up. What happened to Hayden Benatare? What happened to my blushing bride that never was? I, I genuinely don't know. I'm concerned. Um, what is happening? Moving away from subjective beauty, let's talk about the film itself. We have some great action in this. We have a lot of stabby stabs. Because it's Scream, it's hard for me to criticize some of the moments in the picture that were kind of bothering the shit out of me. I'm trying to tell myself, Adam, it's okay. These aren't meant to be that serious. But when I see a person get stabbed in the back repeatedly or gets just like a freaking ice pick to the side of the throat and they're still running around like nothing happened, I, I, I start to lose a little bit of the interest that the movie wants me to have. I will also say the first 50 minutes of this movie is damn solid. That second half is a chore, especially the final act. It is a slog to get through. This thing sits there with you. The exposition dumps are unending at times. But negativity aside, we still have an engaging, exciting film here. I'm a little bit burnt out on Scream. I get it. Okay, Ghostface stabbing people. Who is it? Who done it? Scooby-Doo this thing, pull off the mask, get the reveal. Fine. And if you're still fully invested in the Scream franchise, you're probably not going to have a problem sitting through this one. There are some good kills. It's probably the goriest of all of them. Get some close-up knife stabs through eyes and whatnot. I mean, they, they don't shy away from showing you things. 
This is the first time in a screen film where I actually figured out what was going on pretty early. So I don't know what that means, if it's a detriment to the film or if I've just seen so much of this stuff now that I'm, I'm, I can call it a mile away. I don't have anything else for you. That's it, my thoughts on Scream 6, they're still going. They're still doing a decent job with these movies. You're either on board this train or you're not. And you can let me know in the comments below. You liking Scream? You kind of checked out of the whole thing? Are you on the fence like me? Like, I could still really get into a Scream movie if they did it justice. Please feel free to like the video if you were entertained or if you just feel bad for my appearance and you're like, oh, this guy could use a like. Subscribe to the channel if you like that brutal honesty in a guy that just talks like normal people do. I like to think I'm a basic bitch and I can communicate with people on a surface level. We can go deeper too, but uh, I like to live right here, right on that line. Thanks again for watching the video and if you stick around, I have a 65 review coming at you real soon. So look out for that as well. And one more thing about Scream, I have, oh, he's calling me back. <laughs> We're just gonna let that go.